How's it going there everybody? It's Mr. Zen over here bringing you guys a brand new non-Baka episode discussion. And for today's summit, guys, we're going to be talking about is episode 11, folks. Because in this episode, I personally think that this episode was more along the lines to say that this episode involved many of, I would actually say, Rock's own involvement as to what he actually won in the New Year's tournament. They did involve also Nico as well involved in the episode. But it just seemed to me that this episode was literally all about rock only in my own opinion like to me that actually stood out and actually had more of a sympathetic in terms of emotional appeal in terms of in case any interviewer wants to actually watch this episode because that's the way i see that rock actually has a way with words that it just seems that his his terms of how he actually wants to view the world seems very very optimistic and that i really want to see more of the backstory that's involved with rock himself that rock himself honestly i feel like he's just an overshadowed character that needs more and more time to shine to showcase as to what really go, went along the lines back in his past like this guy he must have seen some a lot of messed up stuff or at least had a dark past that you know, that's still kept in the limelight, but we're wondering as so they're doing that teasing us just bit by bit by bit because they want us to give, you know, Rock's ability of his stone car hardcore demeanor, but with a passion right there, you know. But that's the thing though, let's talk about Rock first. So Rock in the episode, like I said at first, you know, he he was showcasing what he actually won, and that was a stone oven, folks. In case you guys aren't familiar with a stone oven, it's basically just like a, like basically a giant stone furnace that you can basically like you can cook anything you want in there because it'll have like a like a metal hindage that way you can like put stuff like kind of you can say food particles in there and you can just keep it in there as long as you want and etc and you take it out and boom you can like cook dough pizza or whatever you want on it. it doesn't matter as long as you don't burn it to a crisp but the point is it's literally an ideal I would say utensil for for chefs in back well back in the old days of course in today's modern technology of course we are actually renovated the stone oven into many many different appliances so of course you can bring that kind of stone oven down to many different skies in today's world but what Brock was saying was in his episode was that the stone oven is really the pivotal of what everybody should actually try because that's how it was back made it back in the day of how food was made so that's what really will bring warmth to your stomach and honestly rock when he was explaining to himself as to that food really helps ease the person itself really really took a gander on me like honestly i personally love what rock was doing and did this episode because of the way he was saying that you know everybody has their own favorite that makes them feel like they're at home and it makes them reminisce about their past like it makes them feel comfortable in their own skin and honestly like i thought about that when Rock was saying was very very true you know everybody has their own favorite food that makes them feel very happy on the inside and rock itself like i said he took the spotlight when he was just showcasing his dialogue with the other inmates themselves and he was even showcasing as to what his involvement with Jugo was, and even it's funny because Jugo doesn't have a, re a recall saying like, "Oh, I never, I don't ever recall ever saying that to you, really." Like it's interesting that that the other inmates, Rock, Uno, Nico, they all see Jugo as like this really, really pivotal person that really brought them from down under and. Be, made them be who they really are now and that's the thing that makes it interesting because we were wondering like wait a minute Jugo has done this and we're still kept in, the, in that really that small limelight saying it as to wondering like what the heck happened between all these characters that that made them so friendly you know like remember guys when this anime was for a showcase they're already friends even though this is a gag anime yes but I, I'm still loving the lore that's involved with the inmates themselves that's what really makes the anime interesting because it this anime can also be serious but at the same time it could be very comical so it's it's it likes to drift in between the in the, the you could say the half seriousness and half half comedic gag that it likes to do it in you know it's very entertaining to see how it actually goes along with that route but like i said rock's involvement was very entertaining and it's funny because of the fact you know that we get to see all these food puns in there in the episodes well that it, it, i thought it was pretty good i thought it was good now we're moving on to nico like later on we then learned what nico got involved in the new year's tournament and what he won from that was basically he got his own arcade like a whole room dedicated just to arcade games folks and that was entertaining but the thing that kind of it, that it really didn't stick out to me is because it felt like it was like a like a child's dream you know like oh yeah i finally got my own game room that like we can all finally have fun guys like that that's what i felt like that that's what, what nico was really like what he really had but honestly 
but if I remember correctly, Nico also said the same thing that Rock said to Jugo in the episode is that, you know, you really helped me find what I really wanted because I believe Nico had a hard time reading. So <laughs> it's funny how they went along with that route that, uh, that Jugo just gave him a manga with, with pictures and words so that way it'd be easier for Nico to understand and Nico kind of took that as a really big thank you gift saying like oh thank you now I can understand these stories better and I thought to myself that's actually an interesting way of looking at it either that Nico must be really 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 special that he does not understand how to read or either that or he's just been drugged up all the time but honestly love the way they kind of had their interaction there was pretty entertaining but at the same time this episode did involve with Musashi as he was involved in the episode for a little bit as you see that he actually gave a formal apology to Jugo but even though Jugo wasn't saying like oh thanks you know it's all good like he was very he was very nonchalant about the the situation itself because he already put it to his past and he's not really trying to dwell on the past anymore now he's trying to look forward to it which I thought that's actually pretty entertaining that we're seeing Jugo go towards that route now honestly what I was kind of curious was the fact that Uno was kind of stepping in and we're noticing that Uno really he really like he really has Jugo's back, and that's the thing that I'm kind of entertained about is the fact that I wonder how these two guys met. You know, the first time they actually met with each other, or I would say what brought them to be that close. So it seems that Uno is much closer to Jugo itself, but we're still kind of wondering as to what really happened in the past. All these characters that they all met with Jugo, it seems they all have a very very a close kindle kind of relationship. But like I said, we still don't know what really really happened in the past. Hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll shed some light on us in the future in the later episodes or at least in season 2 because this is episode 11. I believe there's about 13 episodes in total. But hopefully they'll, they'll shed some light on that. Now granted though, like I said, oh Musashi, like I said, he gave his formal apology and everything and everything was done nice and done. But then when Musashi, but Musashi really was, he was heading to his cell to be detained there for the rest of his life. But I believe it was Kenshiro was there and told him, oh you know, I can help you escape this because you made friends now with all the, with the present inmates of number 13, I can help you get there. And that is due to the fact that, that he wants to know what's happened in the past between Musashi and I believe the, the person that gave them the the special gears and and weapons and powers that uh, they gave to Musashi and Jugo. Now that's going to be interesting. Maybe Kenshiro is probably conspir is conspiring with that same person. We don't know that for sure, but one thing's for sure, if it is, that'd be pretty interesting. But that's it for today's semi guys. Let me know down in the comments below as to what you guys' thoughts on Nambaka's episode 11. As this episode, like I said, was, it was very, very entertaining to see how it was going. It was very emotional. Like I said, Rock's dialogue involved in this episode was very powerful. That I thought was, was pretty entertaining. It wasn't necessarily actually boring. It was far from boring still. That's the thing about Nambaka is that they're able to make every episode very differently entirely. And yet keep the pace at a, at a, a very rhythmic pace actually like a, a rhythmic rhythm i'm sorry <laughs> but like i said let me know down in the comments below as to what were you guys' favorite you could say moments in this episode because it was there really wasn't any action sequences involved but more or less to say dialogue involved throughout the episode but like i said let me know down in the comments below and as always guys if you guys enjoy my content don't forget to give a like comment share and subscribe for more nambaka episode discussions and as always guys i hope you guys are having a wonderful day but this is mr zen Signing out.